10 elm species you should know about. The American elm is the classic tall shade tree with a vase-shaped canopy spread of 40 to 75 feet. It is the state tree of Massachusetts and North Dakota. Although this is the hallmark species most devastated by Dutch elm disease, it has made a comeback over the years as horticulturists have developed cultivars that could better withstand Dutch elm disease than the species. Cultivars you should consider include Valley Forge, Princeton, Lewis and Clark, and Jefferson. The Camperdown elm is a weeping variety of the white elm. It requires propagation by grafting. The trailing, twisting branches and dense foliage can create a lovely hidden room, unlike other elms, it has a flattish canopy that can spread wider than its height. This species prefers moist soil, keep it well irrigated in times of drought. The cedar elm is a good choice for urban areas because it tolerates pollution, drought, and poor soil. It has the smallest leaves of any elm species. Although it bears no similarity to the cedar, it earns its common name because it is frequently found growing near junipers, which are sometimes known as cedars. It is the most common elm variety found in Texas. This species is susceptible to Dutch elm disease, though not to the same extent as the American elm. The cherry bark elm is a large, bushy tree that can live for hundreds of years. It has smooth bark, an overall round shape, and its samaras are elliptical rather than round. It has proven to be less susceptible to Dutch elm disease than other elm species. The Chinese elm has a rounded shape and distinctive exfoliating colorful bark in shades of brown, gray, green, and orange. It adapts to many types of soil and prefers moist but well-drained conditions. It can be used as a substitute for the American elm in the quest to overcome Dutch elm disease. It shares the same vase shape as the American elm, the David elm is a small deciduous tree with a dense canopy. This species is extremely important in the efforts to create elm cultivars that are resistant to Dutch elm disease, serving as a parent species to many hybrids. It prefers moist wetlands areas but has trouble growing in areas outside of its native range. The English elm is very fast growing, up to 3 feet per year, and is one of the tallest elm species. It can have a canopy spread up to 50 feet. This species reproduces through suckers instead of seeds and was abundant in England before the advent of Dutch elm disease. It has a good tolerance for salty soils and urban pollution, but the wood is rather weak, limiting its appeal as a landscape tree. The European white elm, sometimes known in the US as the Russian elm, is a fast-growing tree with a broad open oval crown that will eventually become round. In its native environment, it can be found growing in floodplains and along river banks. Unfortunately, it can be susceptible to Dutch elm disease but the elm bark beetle, which is responsible for spreading the disease, tends to avoid this tree. In a moist planting area, this species can work well because it can withstand bouts of wetness and flooding. The Siberian elm is a small to medium-sized deciduous tree. It is fast-growing, up to 3 feet per year, with a canopy spread of about 40 feet. Ideal conditions for its growth are well-drained, nutrient-poor soil, and full sun. In North America, it has become an invasive species, since it is very tenacious and can grow almost anywhere, but don't automatically rule out this tree for your landscape. It can be a good choice for places where other trees and shrubs can't grow, and it is resistant, though not immune, to Dutch elm disease. Slippery elm is a medium-sized deciduous tree with a vase shaped to broad rounded crown. The species name rubra provides a hint that some part of this tree is red. In the case of the slippery elm, its inner bark is red and its blooms are reddish green. The name slippery elm comes from the mucilage found in the inner bark. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more interesting videos. And please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm.